And I, I knew he was going to puff up, but wait till you see what my friend John White has on tonight. I mean, I had my bright green shirt on, but stay tuned. Oh, my goodness. John Hazen White Jr. is my guest tonight. He needs no introduction. I don't need to proffer. Uh, he is one of our uh, standout citizens, businessmen, philanthropists, and he's outdone himself this evening, and I'm not going to add to that. You'll just have to wait a few minutes. How are you? It's nice to have you along for a Monday evening in the summer. Wouldn't you know, school starts and it's 90. It just always kind of works out that way, right? Let's go to the rundown and check out what's happening. Yeah, Big 38 News. So as you know, our Friday programs are generally, if you don't know this, you should know, our Friday programs are um, generally recorded on Thursday evenings so we can have longer form conversations and production schedules and the like. So I don't get a chance sometimes on Friday evenings to refer to the news of the day, but this was a big blockbuster that came out on uh, Friday morning, and everybody is kind of paying attention to this. Headlines at WPRI.com are just, you know, re reflecting on some of the things that everybody is is wondering about, like what is in the vault. Here's a little bit of eyewitnesses' coverage of this Judge Silverstein decision to open up the files in the 38 Studios lawsuits. The public will get to see what went wrong in the failed 38 Studios deal. We're pleased that the story is going to at least partially be getting out now. Mike Stenhouse is with Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity, one of four advocacy groups calling for an independent investigation on how the video game company received $75 million in state loans. In Superior Court Friday, a judge ruled to unseal the confidential documents, in turn showing how 38 Studios went bankrupt in two years, leaving taxpayers with a bill of nearly $90 million. All right, so follow what's going on here. This is the civil civil litigation that Link Chafee started. And, that, and you know, listen, Link Chafee dropped the ball on this as much as anybody because he didn't service this project that he protested. Don Cherry started as governor, but we now have already learned through Tim White's good work and Ted Nisi's good work that Gordon Fox actually was most likely an instigator of the 38 Studios get-together. The thing here is, is that the House Speaker, Nick Mattiello, expressed all sorts of uh, glee over the idea that now we'll find out when really he should be policing his own General Assembly. And until he figures out that he should be policing his own General Assembly, the cloud of 38 Studios will hardly be lifted. Then today I hear that our Attorney General, there's a rumor we have one, uh, Peter Kilmartin, I think is his name. Check the spelling. He suggested that it was a great thing, too, because even he doesn't know what went on thoroughly in 38 Studios. The top law enforcement officer has been asleep at the switch on this project and, of course, was part of the old boy network when the whole stealth vote at the House of Representatives in May of 2010 came down. Uh, I don't think that this information, which will come out in 10 days or so, and will be poured through by press members, will relieve the House Speaker or the Attorney General responsibility. I think it will demand their responsibility. We'll talk more about it over the course of the next week or two. In the meantime, uh, that's a typo. I don't know how I missed that. We have a whole production meeting to start this TV show, and we missed that. that ain't fl it's not flat broke. That would be flat broke. Well, that's what they... <laughs> ah, you know what? I bet you they can't spell it in commentary either because they can't do anything else right. That's the, that's the, uh, the notion. Here's the headline. <laughs> Coventry Fire District can't make the payroll. And here's a little bit of eyewitness news coverage of this mess. Out of money and out of options. That's what board chair Frank Palin says is the state of the Coventry Fire District. We're tapped out. The board of directors is expected to vote Monday night on whether to lay off all firefighters, effectively closing the district. Palin says fire taxes from the district's 9,000 residents don't cover the costs, and this week they won't make payroll. The choices are both bad. We lay them all off. We have no fire service. We don't lay them off. We're in violation of state labor laws because we can't pay them. What did we do? We've offered several concessions in uh, probably an amount about three hundred three hundred fifty thousand dollars david gorman is the firefighters union president he believes the threat of layoffs from palin is political and there's another option you'd roll your sleeves up you'd get to the bargaining table you'd sit down and you would communicate with your employees and say here's what we need palin's been absent for the 12 negotiation sessions that i've been involved in and that's been every single one of them yeah this guy is actually a great spin meister this uh fire union president He's been on the program before, pleasant enough guy, but you know what? The entire board 
that the Coventry Fire District has voted not to participate in those negotiations. They've hired Tim Williamson, the former state representative and lawyer for Warwick and West Warwick, West Warwick mostly, uh, who's pretty competent at this stuff. So that's a complete red herring. The $350,000 concession that the fire union offered was contingent on the voters adding $600,000 to the budget. The voters said no. The voters are kind of weird, though, I will tell you. They're playing with a little fire, all pun intended here, because the payroll ain't going to be made this Friday. And there's a likelihood that there's going to be challenges with ambulance service as well as firefighter service. It's a complete mess, a complete vacuum of leadership, both on a local and statewide level. And we'll just have to see how it goes after tonight. The uh, fire union wants a meeting with the fire board. The fire board says, we'll take a meeting, but it's got to be in public. I don't know. We're going to discuss it Wednesday. Mr. Palin will be in here. Uh, the union president's also invited if you'd like to come. Trump in Norwood? Yeah, so he was uh, real close. Or was it Norton? Are we having one of those days? Norwood or Norton? It was either Norwood or Norton. We'll, uh, we'll check. That could be me jumping the gun. But here's the headline on all of this. What, did I have a long weekend or something? A hundred dollar per person event. You know what it is? It all happened when I saw John White tonight. He just, he's, wait till you know. Trump arrived and the people thought it was like the Beatles. Guys are excited to be here. Throw. Oh, absolutely. Longtime Bellingham businessman John Murray is one of the 1,000 guests who paid at least a hundred dollars to attend Trump's event. I've been to seven Patriots Super Bowls. I've seen, I saw Elvis Presley three times, and this is on a level with that. When women's rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. Protesters outside say they're against Trump's support for anti-abortion. Politics has become big business, and right here we're seeing two of the shrewdest businessmen in the Northeast holding a fundraiser for funds that they don't need to run one of their campaigns. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. Ernie Bach Jr.'s effort to help Donald Trump I thought it was only supposed to be 500 people, 1,000, do the math, times 100. That's a million dollars raised. Wow. But uh, Trump says he doesn't want any money yet. Uh, do the math. Trump is 300 million liquid. A real presidential run is going to take a billion dollars this time around. He's reportedly worth anywhere from 4 to 10 billion, but it ain't all liquid. He's going to need your money. So uh, just know that. And by the way, it was Norwood. Anyway, back to school. Everyone's going at some time in the next week or so. Yes. I just wanted to make mention, if you take a look at the staggered starts of the local districts around here, it's unbelievable. Some started Thursday of last week, some started today, some start next Thursday. Why can't everybody just start at the same time so families can all be on the same page, whether they live in one town or another? Why don't we eliminate the February school vacation? If we did that, we could just start after Labor Day, like we used to do in the old days. And lastly, a decision is going to be made very soon on the Tom Brady deflate gate. But don't get excited because the final resolution is not coming anytime soon. Headline, deflategate.com. Yes, Tuesday or Wednesday. And a quick, quick update on the uh, Players Association perspective. Uh, we want to thank the court. We tried our best to reach a settlement, which we did not reach. Uh, but I think it, uh, for us, it reinforces the desire and the need for an independent arbitrator. Uh, in, in these matters of personal conduct, but we understand Tom's position, and uh, I think the process will work itself out. Know this, that if Tom Brady wins this decision, he'll play. If Tom Brady loses this decision, he'll play in 2015, because the appeals, both sides will appeal. The appeals will take well through 2015's season. That's a promise. Your state of mind is important to us. Just give us a ring, email. Facebook post, tweet, you know how it works. And we'll check in with you tomorrow night on your thoughts because I'm hurrying to the break. John White's here and I got to catch up with him. So do you, stay with us. All right, my math is all screwed up. I'm, 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 I'm just, so $100 per person and 1,000 people show up i got to get the chairman of TACO to tell me that my math's not good. Uh, you've seen him before. You know. He lets the politicians come to his building and talk. It's a place of free expression. There he is, my friend. Is this a brand new? That's a brand new jacket. 
That is so sweet. That is, <laughs> that is so sweet. But you know, I just knew you were going to try to outdo me. So I thought, oh, no, oh, you knew I wasn't going to try to outdo you. I'm not giving you that chip. So $100 and 1,000 people is a $100,000. Right, according to my math. Hold on, how many zeros are there? All right, whatever. Trump says <laughs> he doesn't want the money. Right. Uh, you're a man of means. You've thought about running for office before. Do you think about the financial considerations? Yeah, I do. I, I, I do because I think it's really important. That's why I love. One of the things I really love about Trump is that he, is he, is he's refreshing from the standpoint that he's saying what he wants to say and what a lot of us would like to say too. And if we're in that position, but, but he's not tethered to anybody, right? And that's because he's paying his own bill. So I've thought always, if I ever ran for something, I would try to fund it, 100 percent myself. Well, it's nice to have allies. But they can become an anchor also. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's really an interesting conversation because financial donations are an expression of First Amendment uh, connection. So when you run for office without raising any money, there is actually a disconnect. We're all, yeah, I we're, see, we're, I see. Right, right. So. Sure, I, I see that. So if you run for office, I might write you a check for ten dollars because you know what? I've never written a check to any, doing what I do. I've never given any candidate any money ever, um, but I might give you a couple bucks. So what's your announcement tonight? You've got the nice orange jacket on. What are we thinking about running for? <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> I'll run for whatever I want to run for, and yeah, the, when, I'll win. Yeah, you will. Sure. That's awful. That's awful confident actually there's a little bit of listen anybody's watching the show carefully and they'll roll the dvrs back i think they just saw something in your eyes when you said that mm -hmm. are you getting an itch to scratch no 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 seriously no come on no maybe i'm scratching it. please do that's I what am. i'm asking really yeah we have a leadership void right now i mean i'm sure you'll say all the right things about our governor and and i you know i'm not down on our governor i'm just well, you tell me. I, I'm not here to preach. I'm here every I day. People, I, I, what, what, what you, where, where, where are we in terms of the sense of leadership in the I, state I, right I th now? I, well, I don't think it's just the state. I think the country's in a, in a, in a, uh, a leadership void. Uh, frankly, I think, um, uh, I think that's why uh, Trump is, people are gravitating to Trump in the, in the way they are. I don't think he's going to make it, by the way, by any means, but necessarily. But... Um, uh, but he, uh, you know, I think this country and the state, every place is a star for leadership. And what I'm seeing here, I don't know, uh, economic development. Let's talk about the primary responsibility of the governor. I, I, unemployment's down a little bit. That's a good thing. That's a, a move forward. We, we revamp the economic development uh, activity to the to the commerce department. I think that's a sign of of of, of thinking of moving forward. But uh, I, Danny, I think it's too early to tell. Uh, I really, hmm. I really do. I, I, I don't know how you measure leadership other than uh, uh, the Coventry thing would be a, a good example of lack of leadership. Correct. Right? But, Where uh, everyone's watching the ball kind of drop or pointing fingers back and forth. But even in that situation, if I'm the governor and I see this on the news, I say, get in there, triage right now right. with formal and informal steps. Like, what's going on with you guys? I mean, that, that kind of be there problem fixer disposition is something that we seemingly don't have and you know what I the one of the things that I, even though I think Gina Romano has tremendous um, skill sets you get this thing that it's not about this it's going to be about the next step with her and everyone oh I, 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 I see that I agree with don't that. you think in the next gubernatorial election if there is one I mean there should be there will be in 2018 it would be nice to have candidates who, who express that this is the project like this is the project Right. Well, you what you used to call it something, the big word or the big, well, idea, the big, idea. big idea. No, I'm talking about just. I, I want someone who's going to just roll their sleeves up and dig into every cumulative challenge the state has with a level of energy. And I don't, I don't see that. I see a lot of talking and a lot of meetings and a lot of conferences, but I don't see that kind of dig in. You know, she's got this tourism campaign. We had a couple guys from the Adam Group here. Uh, last week and on the radio today. Right, I heard that. Yeah. And, and they're talking about, you know, the tourism budget. And they've got a novel way of approaching it. And I'm thinking, can we clean the place up first? Right, yeah, yeah. Do I you agree. I totally, I totally, you I, have I, customers I, coming in to take all, all the time. Do you, do you wince? Uh, we use the right places. 
we take them to Newport, and I mean, you know, where you're safe and that because it is a beautiful state. There's no question right. about that. But, uh, uh, and we and we've tried to play 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 off of the good the good parts because it, because it's uh, we don't talk about the estate tax we don't talk about those kinds of things with our customers we we talk no, about I'm talking the, about the, the highways and the weeds no, I, and the I, garbage I, and we those are things that I want a governor to say that's priority one we we need to clean up our yard physically right, it I, might I, clean I, up our attitudes I think um, um, you know I, I think that sort of leadership. Is, is definitely achievable and we we had it under Bruce Summer were you here then yeah I was just after he was amazing because boy when he knew something need fixing needed fixing he fixed it to the best of his ability and that wasn't always popular politically but he did what was right in his mind and I think that's some something that's been compromised over the years is people's ability to uh, somehow maybe it's a uh, sort of why I think the way I do about the financing of, of candidates is that they must sacrifice some of what they think is right to so, uh, to to to, to um, uh, you know to honor their their support base somehow mm. I don't know if I'm right I'm not I walk what do you think stuff, about this 38 thing I, I, I mean, th th for some reason the governor and the speaker of the house they don't seem to understand even though the governor made a campaign uh, assertion that she would launch an investigation at 38 or so the House Speaker has done everything he can to run from it. The Attorney General doesn't even know that it exists. exists. But every public-private partnership concept that's coming to play right now is polluted by the way people feel about that. Absolutely. Do you, do you sense it? Totally. Well, hello, look at the ballpark. You know, it's just overwhelming uh, um, anti, you know, uh, ballpark, seemingly, from what I can ascertain. And, and so much of it comes down to comparison to 38 Studios. Well, the ask was pretty outrageous. Oh, yeah. No, there's the, I, I think I don't. I am. But the very idea it, from, the, you, from Jump Street, people are like, oh, private money, public money, somewhere the wash and the bada bing is there. And so I ask you, community leader, guy that stares people down on billboards to do the right thing, Am I incorrect in, 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 in continuing to beat the drum that General Assembly needs to finally police itself and do its own investigation to show that it's an accountable branch of government? Absolutely. We, Why isn't that getting through it. the Speaker's head? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't want it or something, right? I don't know, but I, you're, you're absolutely right. He says it's not our role. We're yeah. not an investigative body. It's his, so it should be the role of an outside group to do that. Is what he's suggesting. No, he's, uh, he's suggesting that this this civil litigation is going to serve the purpose, It'll, and if there's criminality, the state police will figure it out. That's what he's suggesting. Uh, well, it needs to be brought forward and done. We need to put it to bed. I agree. Or with, with consequences. Yes, with consequences. We'll find out what's going on at Taco. There's changes there and. A bunch more. Stay with us. You know, uh, Johnny, the mindset that you have with your facility at Taco, which is that all comers, as long as they can, you know, bring some level of decorum, can use your facility on a First Amendment basis. Uh, during the gubernatorial race, we showed video before. You had Alan Fong and Ken Block there. You, you were doing something that I think was subtle. But profound, which is to say, dialogue. You want to be a leader? I'll give you my place. Come prove it, right? Isn't mm -hmm. that kind of your disposition? Yeah, of course. It was the same with my when I had Lookout, the TV show. Mm. You know, it wasn't about my opinion. It was about everybody else's opinion. I mean, I just wanted to facilitate, and and I think that's good. You know, and, and by the way, um, I'm not a conservative. Uh, probably am. Conservative, but I mean, um, that facility was open to anybody else. Right, right. Uh, Democrats can come. Absolutely. Do you have a thought on Alan Fung's troubles with the Cranston uh, Police Report I think by the it, state police? I I think it's a shame because I think it, uh, from what I can ascertain, and again, I'm not in the middle of it, but it doesn't look good. Right? And uh, I think he's uh, he's been a really a, a good a pretty good mayor and uh, uh, 
from everything that, that in, in any way it's uh, impacted us, certainly. And I think uh, uh, this is going to really uh, tarnish him and his ability to either uh, be effective for the rest of his term or, and or run again. You've had some changes at the company. Yes, sir. Big. Brief bullet on that? Sure. Uh, I've, I've stepped out of the way of the company, uh, and we brought in a uh, uh, president uh, to, uh, to manage its growth and development. Uh, I can go find that growth in those areas for development, but then they have to be managed through. Uh, we've restructured the top uh, level of the company into a, a different executive sort of structure, which is uh, incorporating uh, uh, different views of, of, of channels to market and, and, and focus on channels to market. And, and it's, it's the most uh, refreshing time in my career, f or at least for many years. I mean, we've had so many of these uh, where we come to thresholds and have to cross over them to, 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 to move forward again. And we've been effective at it. And we've done it with the same people, for the most part. And so we've hit another one of those. And for all of us, it's refreshing to, uh, and to bring in a, a, a new set of eyes, not from our industry, totally from outside the industry. Very, very smart guy uh, with um, a, a vision and a, and a very quick study. Learned this company faster than I, than I could have imagined, and is able to help uh, uh, tutor and guide my boys so that this can uh, remain uh, a, a family company and move into the fourth generation. Does I could never do that. Would, uh, my kids are never going to listen to me, you mm -hmm. know, but they'll listen to somebody smart. Yeah. Well, they'll listen to you. They have a lot of respect for you, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know, same thing with my daughter. I could tell her something six times over and they doubt it. Somebody outside the family says it; it becomes true. Sure, you know I'm talking about. That's advice. what that's what I mean. Yeah, I don't mean I'm not listen to me. But that, but that's it, that's kind of what it is. It takes a little bit of humility to be able to kind of step away from the daily operating role. Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, and 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 so I, I came to grips with the fact that my my primary role, Dan, moving ahead, w w is to uh, find the growth opportunities, find the whatever you know, because I'm pretty good at that stuff, at the strategic stuff and all relationships. But the one thing I, I, I have to do is to be sure that I uh, protect or watch that the company protects our core values and what we are. What we are is something very special. That is a very special little company. And the, and, and the relationships that we all have with one another uh, have provided us growth and, and strength. And it's my job to be darn sure that that's protected. One would only have to walk through the plant to see what he's talking about. I, I've seen it firsthand where uh, people on the line see Mr. White come through and they stop. Who I don't know who hugs who first. Um, you can't lose that in your place. No, sir. And you're not going to no. with, with the new with the new operation. Of course, there's less to hug. I've only got a minute here, but what the hell have you done? What have you done? All chubby guys in America want to know, what have you done? Well, two things. I'm working with this clinic in Manhattan, which we focus on the blood. So we've made sure that my blood's in pretty good shape. Uh, we worked on... Uh, uh, some of my, my um, uh, yeah, so we focus on the blood. Uh, and uh, I have and this. And you're working out like a beast. I have this tremendous, he's an incredible trainer. And he is really push. It's like boot camp when I go to that place now. So working on the blood. I can do uh, some pull-ups now. How about that? I you never can? quit my whole life. I can now do five. Congratulations. Yeah, it's cool. On arm wrestle? No. Because <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> good to see you, my friend. That's always good. All right. One more thought, stay with us. We got a roll. See you on the radio tomorrow at noon and back here tomorrow night. Good night.